Hello, my name is Nobody. I'm going to be casting the second game in this matchup of uh, Real Time Strategy League, uh, the clan, the um, the clan league. We're going to have CSA versus the Jedi, and we got a four v four on Arena. How exciting! In the green, we'll have for the Jedi team. In uh, I'll just call him Flu, playing as the Mongols. Let's improve in gray, playing as the Spanish. The Jedi Gracie playing as Tutans. And Hoots and Ho playing as the Mayans. So we have a Mayans and a uh, and a Tutans flank. And the pockets are gonna be Mongols and Spanish. Let's introduce the CSA team now. We have York playing as the Goths flank. Drew playing as the Korean pocket. Wood playing as the Persians. And as the Mongol flank, we have Beringer. So very different sieves. Mongol, Spanish, Tudans, Mayans. Goths, Mongols, Persians, and Koreans. Only similar sieve is going to be Mongols here. And we can analyze the sieve matchups as this goes through. I don't see any... No laming as far as I can tell. So let's go through the matchups. Goths, cheaper infantry spam. Uh, they are a little bit slow to get started because they don't get any sort of economy bonuses. But once they get rolling, really can spam out those infantry. Some civs are better at handling it than others. And we'll have to see as we go through the analyzing the civs. But he's going to be at the pocket position. Perhaps not the best pocket because they do need to protect, be protected for a while. Don't have any sort of rush capabilities and have some pretty poor monks. As well as not getting uh, stone walls to defend. So I think I'd like to see them in a pocket position. Koreans, very uh, basically a powerhouse late game. But again, another very slow sieve. Uh, you're gonna have to get your castles out if you want to go for um, for their very strong war wagons, which are very expensive. Or you're gonna have to get out siege onagers, which are again very expensive. But once they get rolling, uh, once they have their full economy, it's gonna be a very strong uh, and very hard to counter um, unit composition, especially if you start adding some towers in there, which can be very population efficient. Persians, wood. Persians, very strong all-around sieve. One of the strongest uh, all-around sieves, I think, in the game. Uh, they have some nice early game bonuses. They have extra food and extra wood at the start. They have uh, a better working town center uh, with more hit points as well. So it allows them to get it to the next age faster, research their upgrades faster, build more villagers faster. And they have a very strong boom, as well as uh, some of the best knights in the game. And some uh, gunpowder. So pretty very str uh, very strong sieve, and as a pocket we're going to be seeing paladins out of them. Only weakness of the Persians, maybe not some strong siege. And a little bit of skirmish here. Um, I think Grey got this first hit here, and he's going to go, and Blue's going to go back. Green's going to move in over here. I don't expect anything to actually go down. And then the flank, Mongols, again a very solid all-around sieve. Uh, very nice dark age due to their hunt bonus. And then, pretty lackluster castle age, but um, their elite Mangadai, probably the strongest unit in the game. Um, very high fire rate, very high attack, good mobility, and uh, some excellent siege. Now let's talk about the Jedi team and their Civ matches. Uh, so far, I think the, the message about, uh, about the CSA team is these are slow but powerful Civs. For the Jedi team, Tudans, a arena classic. One of the great things about the Tudans on arena is um, is their monk, uh, their conversion resistance bonus. We'll see if that comes into effect and if a monk rush is executed. It'd be a very bad idea for the CSA team to try to go for any sort of monk rush against a Tudans player or a team with Tudans since it's a team bonus. Other than that, the Tudans also considered a pretty slow sieve. Uh, get cheaper farms. That's a very nice bonus since farming will be a must. Well, far they'll be farming from early on, is what I meant to say. And uh, probably we'll go into Paladins. I don't expect to see much else from them. They do get the option of Siege on Andre. Um, So pretty decent Siege. Spanish. One of the big reasons you pick Spanish is for their team bonus. Um, team bonus will be 33% more trade. And that helps out everyone on the team. So essentially 133% more, more gold income. I suppose for one player. It depends how you look at it. 
But anyway, it's a very strong bonus. So that's the main reason you pick them. They also have um, very nice paladins. And uh, conquistadors may also be effective in this situation. Uh, influenza Ho, we already talked about, uh, or Flu, we already talked about the Mongols. Um, elite Mangadai is really their strength. And then Putsun Ho, they have some nice rush capabilities. If they do want to go for a forward castle drop, uh, Plumed Arch is a very strong and very cheap unit. And they're pretty, uh... And they're pretty versatile in themselves. Very strong sieve. Going against the Goths, though, the Goths definitely dominate them on arena-type maps. Because the Huskarl is just like a hard counter to everything the Mayans make. So he might need a little bit of help here. Or maybe the Mayans wants to rush the Goths early. Where they can't afford too many Huskarls. So those are the sieve matches. I did bother to go through all of the sieve matches because uh, we do have a little extra time here on arena. And why not? And other than that, most players clicking up to the Feudal Age. First one to Feudal Age is going to be, um, is going to be Flu. He's clicked up extremely early, 22 pop. A little bit of skirmish here. Looks like Green has the first hit. But Blue's going to come in over here and he's going to sway the battle. And problem with going up so early is sometimes you don't get enough, uh, you don't have enough resources to click up immediately, which means your build is pretty inefficient. Which may be the case here. Let's take a look if we can see anything from their builds. We have Market and Blacksmith from uh, from, from Flu, so probably not going to see anything other than a three-town center boom from him. He did win the Scout War. That's very nice. Uh, Drew's not going to have any scouting information anymore. We should see a Market and Blacksmith from Pudzinho. And he's got three on stone, so maybe he's going to go for some sort of rush here. I think a rush could be effective against the Goths before they get rolling. And this gold and this gold is forward for York. So a forward castle drop could be... Uh, could be pretty devastating, actually. Where is the rest of his gold? The rest of his gold is out here. Not going to be able to access that if plumed archers are out early. And could even potentially get cornered in his base. The so York is going to want to be very careful how he plays this here. First one to click up is going to be Flu. So that's a very nice build from him. Very clean, very efficient. Uh, only problem is he's on 24 bills. I'm not sure if he had to idle for that. Uh, perhaps not because he's playing his Mongols. He gets all that food extra. A nice build from him. He's going to have a very nice uh, three town center boom. Possibly two town centers to start with. And the big question for me is where is this castle going to come down? We're obviously going to see a castle from Boots and Ho. Right here would be excellent. Does he have the balls, though? I don't know if he does. Uh, Flu sank he up to castle too fast. I think he did maybe one villager too fast. He's only going to have enough wood for a second town center. And has a little bit too much gold here. He might want to buy some wood. That, or food. So this is one of the dangers of, uh, you want to get to Castle Age as fast as possible, but that doesn't necessarily mean you want to go to Feudal as fast as possible. Ah! <laughs> and the rest of the players clicking up to Castle Age. Uh, I'm sure somebody hasn't clicked. But not sure who. And what is this? Town Center. Only with one villager, though. So we're going to see a boom from Flu, who's currently the top score leader as well. Uh, perhaps due to his Mongol scout. And I think... I think Putsunho is going to have the balls here. No loom, though. Going to go out with no loom. <laughs> and he's going to drop a castle on his face. This castle would be much more effective if it was just a few tiles um, to the left here, so it can be able to take out this gold mine. 
But regardless, maybe we see some P-Tarts, maybe we see him taking him off of uh, York off of uh, Gold. Uh, York has obviously gone for a boom build here. He's not going to have a castle to defend himself with Huskarls. So he could be in a lot of trouble here. And this is something you have to expect from a Mayan player, honestly. You need to think one step ahead of the game. A lot of stone being taken from Beringer. I think it's a little bit early to be going for his castles. But keep in mind, these aren't pro players, so I'm not exactly expecting the meta. And it's good to cast, uh, good to cast uh, non-pro player games from not, uh, from time to time, both because they can uh, be very entertaining due to the non non-meta play style, and it's just good to get uh, every every demographic of Age of Empires a uh, little bit of coverage. So I'm just going to start a workout on this castle. York has to have some sort of plan. He needs some sort of plan to not die. It's going up to three town centers. I don't know if that's the right decision. Maybe a siege workshop would be better than three town centers. And York's going to get kicked off of gold pretty quickly. The stone wall's going down awfully quickly. <coughs> Not much else happening around the map. Three town centers from all the players. It looks like Let's Improve has the best boom here. Just by looking at the farm. 38 bills. He's clearly in the score lead. Let's Improve about 1700 on Vubly. So pretty experienced player. Gracie. Gracie, she's going to go up to four town centers. She's really going to get her boom on. A little bit behind right now. 31 villagers. But she's going to try to recover. Tudin's cheaper farms. She's going to have a nice boom. First castle up from Behringer. It's an early castle. Um, perhaps going to make some Castle Age Mangadai, although they aren't th that strong. For example, with the investment I saw in the castle, I'd like to see that more so into town centers first. I'll always get the castle later. Flint archers are in, and York, he's got a siege workshop up, but he doesn't have access to gold anymore. Uh, where is he, where is he, where is he? Oh, wrong player. York, York, York. There he is. Has just enough gold for two, two siege workshops, and has a market if he needs more. But with this investment in three town centers, <laughs> clearly not able to produce out of all of them. And might have been better two town centers than a siege workshop. Aha, uh -huh, shit, I come. <laughs> so he's asking for the help of his ally. I think York should have had a better plan here. Although this certainly isn't the easy rush to stop either. Town centers are in a good position. He'll be able to have access to uh, his wood, at least. What he needs, though, is he needs some farming room. And we need to see some repairs come in on this Mangonel. Very nice, uh, nice micro from Putsenho. Plume archers can take a Mangonel shop. And they're gonna get out of there. Night streaming out from wood. No armor upgrades on them. Actually getting the first one now. But he's doing all of this off of one town center, which is why you see so many knights so early. Question is, what is the point of so many knights? Maybe he's going to help out and defend Putsuno. Not defend him, oh, go attack him. Almost killing his own Mangano's York. Eagle's going to move in, and this could be devastating if the Eagle gets a uh, kill here. We now have uh, some war wagons from Drew, and the Eagle is going to get a kill. Could he even get a second kill here? A village is going to repair it. Again, War Wagon's very slow. Very slow to get them out. It's a lot of economy. Where is the castle? Here it is. And clearly we're seeing a big difference in strategy. We're seeing more meta stat strategies from the Jedi and more non-meta strategies from CSA. So where did the Knights of Wood go? He's currently the score leader despite having um, the least villagers. There's the Knights. He's going to defend York right now. And York, he really needs to get his, um, he really needs to get his economy rolling. Uh, Wood has put a lot of investment into these Knights. And these Knights, need the investment needs to pay off in uh, Wood's boom. Let's take a look how Gracie's doing. Gracie, I was right about her boom. She's now up to 62 villagers. Getting right up there. She's even going to 5th town center. And you can see how many farms she's got. I wonder if she's thinking about Paladin, Siege, or maybe Teutonic Knights. Yeah! 
big Mega Nut shot on the archers. Only taking out a bit of health here. This eagle still able to do a lot of damage. I think this is a new eagle. And three War Wagons, not going to do a whole lot here. War Wagons actually pretty decent against Plumed Archers, but the upgrades are just so expensive um, to put it on top of such an expensive unit. Good to know, off the back of this, still only on one town center. He's got his castle. Hasn't really pushed with it, though. And right now, York is pretty much recovering. York is on 49 villagers. While well, Putin Ho is on 44, though. And Drew's paying a little bit of stone to York so he can get at this castle. Castle right here might be very good. Plus two armor and bloodlines done on these knights very early. But it's really costing wood in this economy department. Wood only on 45 villages right now. And although plus two armor and bloodlines looks very impressive at this stage of the game... It's not going to look so impressive in a few minutes now, as other players build their economy can afford similar upgrades. Imperial Age from Flu coming in, he's going to be the first to go up. Mongols, he's had a healthy boom. Hasn't had to worry about placing castles too early, unlike our Mongol player here, Beringer, whose boom has been stifled because of that. 64 villagers for him. Flu on 100 villagers. And uh, as we remember from the beginning, Flu said he went up too early. Even so. These knights can be pretty intimidating to these plumed archers. And cast... Town center! This is something you don't see every day. A town center going up in range of the castle. Usually a no-no. And more eagles coming out to take out the uh, mangonels here. Imperial H coming in from Gracie and let's improve. So all the Jedi players except for... Um, Except for Poots and Ho. It looks like York's in some trouble. Where is the castle? He's got had enough stone for a long time now. Still doesn't have the castle though. And I don't think there's enough war wagons either. Here's the castle from Poots and Ho. This is going to be devastating. He's essentially boxing in York. P-Tarts! We have P-Tarts! Village is going to make a mad dash for it. Going to have to sacrifice a few monks for it, but we do have three monks behind here. And there's no point in getting this town center up. It's in range of the castle. And York's going to lose a lot because of this. Looking very poor on this left side. For the CSA team. Beringer has a few Castle Age Megadai here. Where's, uh, where's Flu? He should be getting all of his expensive upgrades now. Only his uh, second castle going up now. So he's going to invest in Delete Mangadai relatively shortly. Peter, Peter, it's going to get a kill on the Mangadai! Oh my gosh! <laughs> he got it! And this one village is going to get the town center up as well. What a hero. But the town center is almost down. What rating is this? I believe CSA players are around, I'm guessing, 1500, although I don't want to insult them if they are higher than that. Um, Let's Improve is a 1700 player. Gracie, I believe, is maybe 15, 1400. So the, very, the ratings do range. Big mess over here. The Knights were able to stop the castle, and that could be, um, that could be very beneficial. And I'm guessing Wood didn't think the Plumed Arches can uh, just teleport over the walls, but apparently they can. And somehow the castle got up. I don't know how the castle went up. I didn't see where the villagers went. But it's a big deal because now York's trapped into his own base. And he's getting his castle. He's going to defend here. Uh, fortunately, Putsun Ho is not up to the Imperial Age to get some trebs out. Here come the Mangadai of, of Lu. And York really hurting on the gold. S still not going to be able to take too much of this gold. This mine can is pretty much going up the same rate it's going down. 
A lot of upgrades going in. I'm not going to um, mention them all. A lot of knights from wood, but... Really doesn't have the economy to support it. Not going to be able to go to the Imperial Age. Not going to be able to uh, keep making knights. And you can't win a game off of two town centers at, at uh, minute 30. Seeing a push at this top sign, we have Tudin's Cavaliers from Gracie. And Paladins from Let's Improve. So double, uh, double cavalry at the top side. Little disappointed we didn't see Teutonic Knights, but uh, it's okay. Unupgraded Mangadai, actually not that strong. The elite upgrade really uh, contributes so much. And where are these p -tarts? The p are gonna bust through the wall! Come on, Boom Nerd, just get, get in position! And here the p tarts go, they're gonna bust through the wall like uh, like in Helm's Deep. And they're through, but where's the army? There's no army to back it up. No reaction from Drew. And Elite Mangadai has done that so huge. Elite Mangadai has just a, just a much better firing rate than regular Mangadai. And finally, Plume Darch is gonna go through. Drew, he had the time to rewall it, he hasn't rewalled it, and now he's gonna be in a lot of trouble here. Korean's player, he's got nothing, he's saying shit, it's GG. There's nothing he can do to defend this right now. We just have the knights. I think this is enough knights to clean this up. Where's his ally? Where's wood? X wood. And you can see how, here how slow uh, regular Manga die fire compared to elite. I mean, look at this fire rate. Pretty much inhuman. Still not looking too good for York. I'm not sure what these P-Tarts killed themselves on. They're gonna go for the castle. I I don't think they're gonna get it. Two P-Tarts not gonna be enough. Although it's close. And finally Imperial Age from Wood, but again he still doesn't have the economy to support it. He's only on 60 villages, he's at half the number he needs to be. Take a look at our other players, which didn't go for knights immediately, instead they went for a straight boom. Let's improve on 125 villagers, upgrading the paladin. Already has paladin, actually. And then Gracie, which went for that big boom, 130 villagers. She should get, she's getting paladin too as well. And there's the GG. Pretty decisive win from, uh, from the Jedi. And not much else to say. Uh, pretty bad mech from York, but uh, Puts and Hope really played it well, played a good strategy for this map, and uh, York didn't have the proper defense once he knew it was coming. Uh, Wood investing into knights early on really didn't do a lot, just pretty much stifled his boom. And you could say similar for for Behringer, going for the castle early, stifling his boom. And uh, Drew as well, so maybe this was a team strategy, he went for the castles as well. Whereas the Mongol player here went for the castles much later.